radios. Mm. Mm. That's the part that gets really, really fun. And it's the last part of our five-part series on HF Digital Modes. I hope you stuck around from part one. Welcome back again for the fifth time. The fifth and final, we're going to talk about radios. What kind of radio do you need? What is going to suit your needs? What are you trying to do with it, buddy? You don't even know yet. You're wet behind the ears, bud. Today, we're going to talk about a little bit, just an introduction. I've said it multiple times, just an introduction on radios. This is Grid Base. Like and subscribe. Let's talk about some radios, man. That's the cool part anyway, right? The fifth and final episode is here. You made it. And today, we are talking about radios. So what is a desirable feature in a radio? Well, there's going to be quite a few things here. One, we're going to be looking at cost. We're going to be looking at, uh, like I said, this is for mobile uh, situations. So we're going to look at portability, uh, power, how much power it uses, what type of thing you need to power it, and uh, the modulation that it's able to operate on. Now, lower my chair here a little bit. There we go. Um, you can use a CB radio to access certain portions of um, HF uh, bands. So with the right antenna and the right setup on a CB radio, an old one laying around, uh, you could potentially be on uh, digital modes and you could utilize it um, in, in that manner. Um, now, of course, there's more dedicated mobile units such as the QRP or the True SDX, uh, which I'll be making some more videos on later. Those are dedicated portable radios. Um, then, of course, the ICOM I705 is also, I guess you could call that a portable radio. Now, the difference between all of these different things from CB at the base level, uh, you know, true SDX being right in the middle, and then the ICOM being at the very pinnacle $1,700 radio, uh, the difference between all those things is just features, just features, just depending on what you want to do. Uh, you know, as an example, the True SDX has a pretty terrible built-in microphone, but it has a port for an external mic. So if you want to do voice on HF, the uh, True SDX will do that with some peripheral equipment pretty well. Uh, it does have a mic built into it. Uh, it's just not very good, and so your transmissions can come across garbled even uh, when they shouldn't because the mic is just kind of messing with your, your voice there. Um, you know, the other th aspect of the True SDX is that it uh, could be less friendly to use in comparison to something like an ICOM that has a very navigatable um, home screen and you know a physical wheel that you can dial things around on. Uh, the True SDX has a wheel, but it's uh, you know very uh, rudimentary. Now I prefer out of all of them the True SDX. Uh, one for its power consumption, two for its portability and size. Um, and three, in the fact that it's pretty serviceable as it pertains to building uh, new cases for it or you know things like that, building a new knob or something like that. Uh, the True SDX is just an awesome radio, and I intend to do another video on that later on. But um, it's just great. It's great for portable stuff, um, and it's also a really good price point. You know, you're talking about $160 for a radio uh, when previously that was unheard of. You know, you just had to get a uh, TX500 or, you know, a Yesu, or you just had to, like, get a really nice radio to be able to play around with some of this stuff. Um, that's not entirely true, but it's pretty true. And the True SDX just fills an awesome void in the mobile HF digital mode situation. So, big fan, obviously, DL2MAN, German guy, and uh, P1ENZ, -E PNs, something like that. Anyway, uh, they developed the True SDX, and uh, if you are going to purchase a True SDX, make sure you go to their website and find one of their certified sellers, because there are uh, copycats, and you want to make sure you get the real true blue thing. So, um, yeah, so desirable features in a radio, of course, cost is going to play a part. I mean, you don't have to spend $1,500 on a radio to get a decent radio. As we mentioned in previous videos, uh, the antenna is really where you should be focused on. And then, of course, the computer that you use and the software that you use, you know, the radio is just the place where everything gets uh, you know, processed, and uh, we're fortunate that we have low-cost options to be able to do that. Now, here is a, uh, this is what I would call like a base station radio. This is the ICOM IC7300. Um, now, if you're going to be operating out of your house, it may be advantageous for you to use something like this, but something like this will consume a lot of power. Um, and so, 
The trade-offs are that you get a lot of functionality such as internal uh, antenna tuners and just all kinds of functions on something like this, but um, it is going to consume a measurable amount of power, um, which you may be fine with. There are some guys that use little small lithium, like actual motorcycle batteries basically, and they keep that in their pack and they prefer to run a full-size radio, and if that's your jam, more power to you. Uh, but just be aware of the different options that are available here. Uh, and why one may benefit you and one may not. Uh, as I have talked to probably too much at this point, uh, this is a, a true SDX. Uh, what a beautiful thing it is. So fortunate to live in the time of the true SDX. Uh, you know, something about it too, and this is maybe kind of a little cheesy, but it just reminds me of like a telegraph type situation. Like just a very small, it's probably the size of what a telegraph was. And anyway, it's just, it's a really cool piece of equipment here. Um, that really does it for the radio thing. The radio is radio is infinite in nature. Um, you know, as far as what type of radio and why you might use one or the other. Um, this was really an opportunity for me to talk about the True SDX, I guess, because that's what I talked about the most. Um, probably because it's what I'm most familiar with, as it's the only radio that I own at this moment. So um, all my understanding of other radios has just been general research that you're going to do as well. And I hope that in the future I can be a resource for you for that. But Today is just an introduction. I'm not going to say it again. That's the last time. So, hope you feel spooled up on radios. Thank you for sticking around for all five parts of this introduction into digital modes on HF. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any further questions, you may always email me at info at gridbase.net or hit me up in the comments. I'm pretty responsive there as well. And if you're interested in purchasing a base station unit from us, uh, you can go to www.gridbase.net and all of our products are available for purchase there. So um, like and subscribe. Thank you for supporting the channel. Bye-bye.